If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this heated episode... A little charged. ...of the Mind Pump... Uh, we have some good conversation. We were a little stimulated by the news of Alex Jones getting kicked off of like all these social media platforms. It's a little frightening, yeah. to be honest with you. We're not like super. We're not followers of his. I, I think he's kind of crazy, but yeah. it is interesting. Interesting stuff to speculate on. But we opened the episode by talking about the male cheerleaders in the NFL. That's I'm a new so thing. excited for this. <laughs> That's a new thing going like, on. Two snaps. Yeah. The Rams yeah. are doing it first. Justin might actually make it to the NFL now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try out. Yeah, you guys watch. We uh, we talked about Alex Jones, of course, surviving social media in uncertain times, and then there's the I'm not racist video by what's the guy's name, Adam? Uh, Joiner. Okay, really really good music video. Um, and we get into this long discussion about new media versus old media, the old guard, and kind of what's going on today, and I don't know, it's exciting conversation. Uh, I also do want to remind everybody that MAPS Performance is 50% off all month long. MAPS Performance is the MAPS program designed to improve full-spectrum athletic performance. Everything, strength, speed, stamina, and endurance. It's half off. All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com and enter the code GREEN50. That's green and the number 50, no space, for the 50% off discount. We also have bundles on there where we take multiple MAPS programs and put them together. The big, the most popular bundle is a super bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. That's also available at mindpumpmedia.com. So again, 50% off MAPS performance. Use the code GREEN50, mindpumpmedia.com. Let's get physical. 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 I want to get physical. Put a little, you put like some an heart angel. Just yeah. keep doing that, yeah. please. He puts like an angel of, of. Let me hear your body talk. Oh. Your body talk. Sounds weird today. Talk to me, I feel Sal. Like Doug. Talk, talk to my body. Stiff yeah, well, a couple times in the the last episode that we recorded, I could tell. I remember one time I shut off, and it just has it. Just I sound different to myself. They sound really good. Huh. I don't sound as sharp. I don't know. It sounds like you a, sound off. Oh, no, do you okay? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you sound, like, you yeah. sound good to me too. Is that connected all one hundred percent on your? Oh, I didn't even think about feeling that. Let's see. Yeah. Push it all the way. Oh, I heard a click. I heard a clicky. Hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, stereo. It's always something so stupid. I know. I'm, I missed. I know. You guys ever do that? You ever call like a like, like a Comcast. like support? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, like I've been working on this. Did for you turn fu- the machine off yeah. and on? I've been working on it for three <laughs> hours and like just try restarting. It doesn't fuck. And then finally you go do it and it works and you're like. Okay, thanks. Yeah, all right. <laughs> like begrudgingly, yeah. like yeah, yeah. That You're like hoping for something like. I See, I to told be complex. you. Complex. I need a whole new system. <laughs> oh, yeah. so frustrating. I hate, I hate it when technology doesn't work. Yeah, I get because it's technology. It's supposed to always work. No, well, you, we, we've evolved. You know, like yeah. these these things just need to automatically work mm-hmm. and, and constantly work. And I'm the kind of person that when something breaks, if I can get along with the rest of my life with it being broken, it's going to stay broken. You yeah. know what I mean? If I absolutely don't need it, then uh, it's gonna. Or I just buy a new one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> did, I ever, did I ever tell you guys a story like the? So this was an uh, ex girlfriend, my father in law, who her father who like uh, wanted to show me how to fix my dryer. Have I told you guys this before? <laughs> no. uh, okay. So and we all know we have already admitted on this show that I'm like not handy at all and like I'm terrible with that. Just like salad. <laughs> You're right? handsy, but so not he was handy. basically <laughs> speaking Chinese. Like right. Well, away. so what happens is you know this is at my this was at my house right. And I'm dating his daughter at this time. And I've been with this girl for, I don't know, like maybe six months or so. And he's like a super retired firefighter, fire chief and like super handy guy, right? Like every, makes everything from scratch, you know? And hunter, fisher, all man's man, totally, yeah. right? And he would always be busting my balls and stuff because like I didn't have like a toolkit at my house and didn't do it. I didn't fix anything, you know. And of course, I get it. Right, I'm dating your daughter too, so he's like constantly just busting my balls. Like, yeah. can this guy give me a take care? Can't of even me? change his oil, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> like, he's gonna be able to take care of my daughter, you know? <laughs> Jiffy lube. <laughs> so yeah. I uh, my wa- or my dryer breaks, and you know, I at this point, I think I had my house but for like seven years, and I inherited that washer and dryer, and I'm like. Oh, it's time for a new one. You know what I'm saying? He goes, so I'll get a new one. He's like, oh, are you kidding? It's probably just that. And he just rattled off some part, you know, like it's probably just that. And I'm like, 
well, I don't know how to fix that. And he's like, that's so simple. It'll cost us just a few bucks. We'll probably, it'll be nothing. We'll, we'll do it. And he's like, Saturday morning, I'll be at your house at eight o'clock. And we're going <laughs> to, I'm like, fuck, awesome. Just what I want to do Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So I'm like, of course, you know, begrudgingly, I agree to it. Right. And he shows up and, you know, with his whole to- toolkit and, you know, we get down there and we, and we take apart this fucking, you know, dryer. We completely right. take we it apart. Disassemble the whole thing. Yes. Disassemble yeah. the whole thing, which is, this is like never a, as easy as they describe it ever. This is like a three hour process and he's handing me the pieces, you know, like put that over here, put that here. We take it all apart. And he says, yep, just what I thought. You know, he's like, we'll go get, we'll go be down to Home Depot. We go down to Home Depot, it's 20 bucks, you know, fix it and then put it all back together and we fix it. And I remember the look on his face because it was like this moment of like, I think he wanted to be like, see, you know, yeah. t- you were going to go buy a thousand dollar fucking dryer. And you know what? You would have been like, if I could rewind time, I would have yeah. bought it and told you not to come hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I go, I just spent eight yeah. hours on my Saturday it taking apart. killed my whole day. Yeah, I was taking yeah. apart a fucking dryer, you know, yeah. to save my. I said, it, the, my Saturday was worth that to me, you know? It's just so funny. I like it that. It is funny. And it, yeah, I go through that all the time because, like, I, I grew up with, you know, my dad and, like, uh, you know, my grandpas and everybody was like, like, they prided themselves on, I built my entire house, you know, myself. Like I didn't have anybody, no, none of my friends came. He had like a friend that came to help like lay down the foundation of cement, but literally every single item in that house was like hand built, you know? And it's, it's like, I, I just like can't compete with that. Yeah. So I, I was always yeah, like, but they don't know how to use Google. So there. Yeah, exactly. There. Yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I have access to all the information in the world. So well, you, the, you, got- know, you know, and the argument to that is, and I, and I get this side, right. Where it's, yeah, but you, you need to be able to do some of the most basic things to survive and you should be able to do these things, hunt and cook and sure. like, right. And fix certain things. Right. Or else but then you can also evaluate whether it's worth your time. Well, the, or, and they go, well, what if, what if everything, what if the internet blew up and we don't have any We're of these fucked. things? Right. We'll yeah. be fucked. Yeah. But here's the thing, the way I look at it too, though, like what I think is just as valuable. Okay. As, as learning those skills is also learning how to network with people. And so <laughs> you're like, I, but I made friends. Exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> so if yeah. shit, if the lights went out, it's good for the economy. If too, the lights, you provide jobs. If the lights yeah. went out, I'm not fucked, man. I've made a lot of friends that can actually build things and fucking fix shit. <laughs> no, I, and here's what you need. <laughs> like, and here's, I, here's, here's what you need. If shit goes down, first of all, if the internet explodes, that's a big deal. It's not like oh, you know, that's a uh, some pandemonium. Crazy it's just anarchy. happened. Forget learning how to start a fire and no, like, get a gun. And, yeah, you need a gun. Like Thank you, Justin. Yes. If you have a gun, don't worry. You'll That's find. All I'm thinking. You'll about. find people that will do shit for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, oh, come you here. candy. Start that yeah. fire for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're you see okay. what I have here? Yeah. yeah this is your motivation. You're okay with that. That's that's all you need. Everything else is fine. <laughs> hey, dude, what's what's going on with the NFL right now? Oh. Big news, dude. dude. Big news. Male cheerleaders? You got first you got the the first uh female uh, assistant coach on the Raiders. So that was big news That's cool. this year, right? That's that is cool. cool. And now we have our first two male cheerleaders. Yeah. Do you know what for I their, do for the Rams. cheerleaders? Do, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I think about? I'm, what I'm curious. Are they going to come out in the skirt with the pom poms? No, no, yes. no, 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 no. Like just no? little, little no. high booty shorts. Or yeah, right? that's, I, I that's thought. I, I feel like that would be in the uniform coat. No, right. no, no. They're wearing. They're going to wear. Didn't you guys see the article I sent you? They're wearing high like heels a, and stuff. No, or dude, not cross dressing. No, they're going to wear boy shorts. Shorts. And here's what here's what's happened. I can I, I I would bet everything on this. So debate me on this, but I bet you anything. The NFL. Lost ratings because they were forcing people to stand for the anthem, right? Mm. They're saying, if you don't stand for the anthem, we're going to fine you or whatever. And they got a lot of heat for, from, for, from a lot of people who are saying, oh, you, sh- you shouldn't do that. They're, you're infringing on the right to you know whatever. And so they had a big meeting and they sat down and said, okay. How can we divert attention? Who are the people that we're pissing off by making them, forcing them to stand? And what can we do to get those people to like us again? So they threw in some guys. To do cheerleading, I think it's literally a diversion. So you don't happen to us because I don't think it's a market demand. I don't know anybody. Yeah, who's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, of, yeah, I, I can't tell you like anybody that was like yelling to make this happen. No, I don't think so. You know what happened to me yesterday when we went to the game that I thought was interesting that has never happened to me before. All the games I've been to, we were actually coming into the arena uh, at the same time that the national anthem was being sung, and they actually shut everything down. They stopped lines from moving. 
Oh, really? And it took me to figure out, like, this guy starts, he, co- he comes running across where, I mean, there's lines of people that are going through the metal detectors and scanning in, right? We're trying to get in the game so we can make the kickoff, right? Yeah. And dude starts yelling, hold all lines, hold all lines. And he's, like, screaming to hold all lines. All lines are held, then, uh, you know, outside the, the Niner Stadium, they have, like, the, the TV monitors that go all the way around. So the flag comes up and then the national anthem. And then I'm, like, I'm looking around because the way the guy was screaming, I thought some shit went down. Like, someone got stabbed and they're, like, don't let anybody else in. Yeah. Like, checking security. I'm, like, oh, shit, what's going on? Huh. And I'm trying to, the national, and it's, like, it doesn't even dawn on me. Like, the national anthem's going and that's why we stopped. I'm trying I'm trying to figure out what went down. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, shit, like, they, they're holding everyone from coming they don't, in. Do they normally do that? No. It's never. I've never ever. I've been in plenty of games where I've yeah. been like, coming in late. There's a lot more emphasis. That's. On this, I, don't, I don't like that. Dude. I've been to a lot of games, dude. That's never happened to me. I don't have I've been a stop. I don't have yeah. a problem. With I've been people. stopped going to my seat, right? Like if I was about to go down and, and walk in front of people, like during action or something like that. Sure. But not the whole arena shut down. I don't, down I don't have you go a. In. I don't have any huh. problem with people standing. For, I stand for the anthem. I have no problem with that. I also yeah. don't have a problem for people. If you want to kneel, that's your freedom of expression. Your, I don't like the your right as an American. Yeah, I don't like the 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 like the forced feeling. It's not forced, right? But the forced feeling of nationalism that doesn't feel good to me. Like the second, they, that's they, what I felt right right there. Like, I don't kneel like that. That's how I. That's how I, I thought that was kind of crazy. I was like, oh, whoa, look at this. Yeah. No, I don't like that, dude. National. Yeah. Here's the thing with nationalism. I understand the the allure of it, but nationalism nationalism's got an ugly side to it as well, and it's the us versus them mentality that can get kind of ugly. Right. And I don't like forcing. I don't like people being forced to do something that doesn't feel it doesn't feel right to me. But you know, the NFL is a private organization and I think they got hurt, right? Didn't it hurt the ratings, that whole deal? Mm. It did. I don't know where they're at now. It'll it be interesting to see. Yeah, some, but I, I saw too Trump's like like right now too is kind of like stirring it back up again and kind of like, you know, holding them to kind of take some certain players uh, to highlight them as examples and all this. It's all starting all over again. I'm Is like, really? oh, God. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if they're just trying to divert attention with the whole male cheerle- cheerleaders. Have a, male cheerleaders have a long history in college, don't they? Yeah. I mean, but, but that's different, though. Aren't they more like Yeah, gymnasts? they're more, I, w- I want to say props or like they help to kind of like the base throw, or whatever. Yeah, they yeah, throw the cheerleaders and stuff. This is different. This is like I know, them I mean, doing the same stuff. That's it's, what I'm in. Is that how it's going to be? So, I no, don't know. No, uh, NFL cheerleaders don't do that, right? No, they don't. Well, so they, they still throw. They've had them before. Like, I I said, like, you know, for like stunts, I think. I don't know. How big of a, let me ask you guys this, how big of a deal are, because I know NFL cheaters don't get paid much. I know that. No. I've known a few of them. What, how big of a deal is that? Uh, are there cheerleaders for football? Does anybody really give a shit, or is that a big deal? It's more a traditional thing just than anything else. I like can for the most part. That's what I'm saying. If the cheerleaders disappeared completely, would anybody care? No, they've <laughs> talked about this before. No. Yeah, this has been. I've definitely read articles uh, on this before. They actually, care at all? It, no, they would. There's like it, there's a. It's more the tradition behind it. Why uh, why it's stayed alive for as long as it has? Because yeah. it's not like you said. And it's I not. Can, a, it's not a. They're not making a ton of money. They make money off of calendars and stuff like yeah. that. Like the amount of money they get paid per game is so little they hey, can sort of cat- get the crowd involved most in of them most of them know. use it to catapult their whatever else they're going to do right they yeah. use that to get some sort of exposure and traction because of the connection but nobody but a, lot, but a lot of people don't really care though right like they're there yeah. to watch football because well, because now we have like you know the loudspeaker we have this the music like you know the crowd involvement is all based off of all that stuff like you know defense like, like they do all the chants and stuff from the announcer guy right. it's funny because uh i posted that article about new, the male cheerleaders being in the NFL, and I posted my opinion, which is they're obviously trying to divert, you know, divert attention. I don't think yeah, there was a market it, demand. It feels for that. a lot like it's just a political move. Yeah, I don't think there's any market demand for it, but whatever. And so I put my yeah, comment, whatever. and then someone in the forum posted, it commented, and said, "Yeah, and I bet they're going to get paid more than the female uh, cheerleaders too." And I'm like, uh, "Actually, <laughs> what? were they serious?" Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> "Actually, no. There's a much higher demand for female. Che- it's like you know what? There's there's yeah, definitely there's fields where not women a lot of make more there yet. because there's a higher demand." And some of that stuff, and then the, oh you know, the reverse. Yeah, that's that, funny. Yeah, and I say, well, you know, same reason why male. You don't think they were, athletes, being, were they being sarcastic? They're probably being sarcastic. Maybe. Yeah, yeah I feel like that has our to forum, be. our forum would be. This sarc- is a, yeah, yeah. Say some that shit. sounds like a funny comment. But you know, hey, it's the way I look at it. Is it's nice for for equality for men. We've been shut out of the the cheerleading. There you go. There's an angle <laughs> in the NFL for so long. <laughs> finally, yeah, man. Yeah. Finally, well, yeah. Put well, us in score there. Score one for the boys. Shoot, I want. Yeah. If I was a single guy, I would be. 
signing up, dude. I don't give a shit. I'm, yeah. look, look who I'm hanging out with. <laughs> you guys can hang out in the locker room, look at each other, and like Whoa. you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm hanging out, you know, the cheerleaders. Yeah, is so, what I'm saying. I don't know. It's what crazy. about what do you guys think? What's going on with Alex Jones right now? Oh, man? oh dude. Shit. How about that? So Alex, <sighs> he Jones, got he got pulled off of. Let's see here. He's got pulled YouTube, off YouTube, of Spotify. Facebook, YouTube. The, the big one was then uh, Apple just made a decision Apple. to, to, to take his entire uh, podcast off off, yeah. off completely. Now he now Twitter is keeping him on. I said Twitter he kicked that he was he was kicked off Twitter, but no, he's actually still on Twitter because Twitter said, "Hey, he hasn't uh, he hasn't broken any of our rules or policies, and we believe in keeping everybody on." Here's the scary thing for me. Now, first off, for those of you that don't know who Alex Jones is, he's this. He's been dubbed this conspiracy. Yeah, right wing conspiracy theorist, you know, provocateur. And he's mm-hmm. definitely said some crazy, insane shit. He's also said some funny stuff. Um, he's it's definitely very comical. Very you, anti war. He calls himself a libertarian, but again, he's that conspiracy theorist type of person. But, you know, I know way worse people that are still I on just, these platforms. I can't, like, uh, like why are you threatened? Like to to begin with, I mean, it's for me. It like, I just look at that as like it's it's kind of some. Sometimes he makes like certain points, you know, that are that are like you know, legitimate. But like for the most part, it's all just wacky, wacky, hilarious well, stuff. There were other people that were banned right around the same time. So here's the scary parts for me. He first off, Alex Jones has a massive audience, so he's bringing a lot of people. Isn't he like the National Enquirer for politics? Yeah, there you go, kinda. Kind right, of, like yeah, the yeah, National yeah. Enquirer for politics. Like every yeah. once in a while, he gets like a real picture in there that that's a real picture of Tom Brady, what he looks like right now. But then the captions like crazy. It's totally yeah. like that, and the, the I think it's because like a lot of people take it like really seriously too, you know. And yeah. so like uh, some of these platforms are like they they just don't like that. Well, he's he's a he has a huge audience, so he brings a lot of eyes to those platforms. Those are all independent private platforms, so they all have a right to kick off whoever they want. It's totally within their rights. However, what I find fascinating is that these major platforms, within hours of each other, kicked them off. Right, right. Yeah, Which means they're in they co-conspired. That's weird to me. That's yeah. a little bit frightening to me because well, how, that tells me that there was some they were working yeah. together to How tied someone. in is Facebook with the government? I mean, let's just speculate that. Uh, we don't need to speculate. They're very much. Right? The government is very, very involved in these huge platforms. Uh, they they you know have laws saying that they have to be able to spy on people through them very much look if you're the government and you're looking at a company like Facebook okay let's say you look at Facebook and it's got I don't know how many hundreds of millions of Americans are on there but I know there's over a billion people on earth that are on there mm-hmm. and the information that people share on Facebook is very Super private private yeah and it's very Way detailed too private and very well. detailed and it's extremely valuable for an organization that's what I'm saying. So if you're looking at that like a government, you're you're I mean your jowls are oh are, you're salivating you're salivating at this this potential power on and a whole other level because there's there's nothing to compare to this up until this yeah. point never nothing like no that. Oh, you never were allowed access into people's homes no like and no no surveillance that the government's ever been able to do has ever been able to get this detailed they know what you like remember anytime you like something on Facebook. It's and what you dislike and what you comment on. It remembers it forever, and it shows you know your what people do, the preferences. It shows how, and Facebook played a big role in the last election, mm-hmm. and that really pissed people off. They, a lot of people think Facebook is what got, you know, uh, Donald Trump to win the election. Sure which, did. Well, which really, really sure pissed did. Off. He, I, he I maximized think, the fuck out of it, yeah. dude. The conundrum for me too, because I know people like want to add regulation because these private organizations are private, but at the same time, it's like where everybody's going to get to do research, to search, to um, you know, look for their news, like look for. But they they literally have an agenda of their own. Yeah, they're, they're, they're their own company with their own standards, and they've created their own ecosystem that you know is is like if you have a different stance than that good luck dude it it, it irritates me because there's definitely interesting biases going on you know recently that we had what's her name sarah jong i think who's uh got hired as an editor for the new york times editor by the way not just a contributing you know author or journalist an actual editor there's a whole string of tweets that she's done that she did a while ago that were extremely anti-white like very very racist towards white people. I'll read I'll read some of them to you. This is her own tweets. Hashtag cancel white people. 
Uh, wow. White people have, uh, have stopped breeding. You'll all go extinct soon. This was my plan all along. Are white people genetically predisposed to burn faster in the sun, thus logically being only fit to live underground like groveling goblins? Like very, very mean, sh- you know, oh, oh, it's sick how much joy I get out of being and who exactly is old she? white men. What is she? She's now an editor now for the New York Times. Oh, okay. And so a lot of people were like, hey, how the, why are what? you putting this really racist woman? And the New York Times is like, no, we're still going to hire her, which I find kind of, there's a little bit of a, of, a, of a double standard. You know, Roseanne made a comment. She lost her show and rightly so. Right. But now this woman is whatever. So this, there's this conservative, this black conservative uh, woman, Candace Owens, who took all these tweets, and I talked about this in a past episode, took all these exact tweets and changed the word white to black. Mm-hmm. That's all she did. Same tweets and everything. Twitter shut her down. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's... it's. Did she tell people ahead of time? Yep. Does, oh, wow. Yep, yep, and it still shut her down. So it's it's interesting kind of what's, what's kind of going on right now. And here's the thing with these platforms. These platforms are not news providers themselves. They are platforms for news and people. And I right. think in that... The hand-selected ones. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like, you know, if that's what you're doing, then you should kind of be open and free. Mm-hmm. and let. I mean, I know they're private. I, I, mean, I understand that, but there's definitely some infiltration. Well, we speculated on this on. shit three years ago on like this, the dangers of the way we get information and how that's going to accelerate over the next yeah. five to ten yeah. years is the most difficult thing about... So information has become so accessible... It's so easy to become an expert overnight yeah. in something well, that you got to be careful on where you're getting all that biased information all the time. The scariest part is that, like you had mentioned earlier, they were all in cahoots together. Yeah, because that's, that's, the, that's not cool. because that means like they all have similar agenda. agendas yeah. th- that are all like together, and that's that's scary because you don't have competing agendas. Like no. now we're now we're just going to get all biased information. Listen, doesn't make sense to me. Here's why it doesn't make sense to me. Let's say you got a guy like like Alex Jones who has hundreds of millions of followers. Like he's huge. He's massive, right? And let's say your Facebook and uh, when you're com- one of the other social media platforms cuts him off. You know what's going to happen to Facebook's page of Alex Jones? It's going to get more followers. Right. So it doesn't make any fucking sense no, to th- me. Th- yeah. And that's the part. Then this is the part that is cool about the time we live in right now is that you can have all these companies get in cahoots and try and fuck you and try and silence you. But it's impossible the time we live now. People, And if you had enough people that were listening to you to where you rose that much attention where someone would want to rip you off that platform, just him simply having a website now, he's probably going to gain more traction and eyes. Yeah. This next- 5. 6, I think they already proved that. 5.6 million people in 48 hours. Wow. There you go. 5.6. There you go. So if your real desired outcome was to silence yeah, this guy. Lifted a, him up. What a stupid way to do yeah. it. Yep. 5.6 million people went to his site and signed up for a shit. In forty the forty eight hours following his banning, wow, pretty crazy, right? But the, the, again, the scary part to me is you have all these competing, separate private platforms all canceling him or 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 censoring him within hours of each other. That smells to me like they were directed. It doesn't exactly. sound like they all work together. It feels like. They all got a letter from someone. He's puppeteering. Yeah, like you know, who knows the yeah, government. Yeah, but if that was the case, don't you think that they all would have got one, including Twitter, and then that would get exposed? Yeah, that was like, interesting that Twitter didn't fall. Right? Suit. Don't you think that would be? Don't you think that would be kind of weird that if that was or, the case? Or who knows? I mean, by the way, that's this very is, Alex Jones. By the way, I, I yeah, I know we're, <laughs> we're going down the rabbit hole. In, this, in the spirit of Alex Jones, I'm going to make a bunch of conspiracies. Yeah, let's what do it. it sounds like. It's fun. If I own Twitter, if I'm the owner of Twitter, or I'm the owner of Facebook, and I get this letter, you know what I'm. I'm probably going to do. I'm probably going to say, nope, I'm not going to do what you're telling me. Yeah. And then I'm not going to say, hey, I got a letter from the government because that'll definitely get my ass thrown in jail. I'm just going to say something like, we're not canceling because we, we believe in free speech or whatever. Because it is weird that you had like four of, of these platforms. You know what else got canceled at the same time within hours? Uh, Ron Paul's chief <coughs> executive officer of his Ron Paul Institute. Ron Paul is another... Hmm. Kind of libertarian-ish, but right-wing, sometimes conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm. So it's really strange to yeah, me. He's that, the one who calls out the Fed really hard. Yeah. A little bit of targeting. It's really on. weird. And at the same time, they're talking about hate speech. Man, I, there's way more worse hate speech that I've seen on these platforms oh, yeah. than what he was saying. I mean, it, it's so outlandish, like what he says. Like, I don't know how anybody takes it seriously. Like, some of the stuff, like, 
uh what it was he <laughs> say like just some stuff like he's talking about like vampire like goblin you know <laughs> yeah, baby eaters big belly <laughs> baby eaters right yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, the globalist you know yeah. like he's a fucking character yeah you know and it's like <sighs> which is why and i know they try they've tried to highlight like certain things that he said to like really like tear him down and justify why he's mm-hmm. getting pulled off there but that, at the end of the day they, he's he's in the business of views and that's part of us that's a strategy you got to yeah. know that I, unless yeah. he is just completely off his rocker i've never hung out with him so i can't say no. he's completely you know, i think like that's you said part- i really think it's a good comparison the national Enquirer. Like, right. he's kind of like running that news department, you know, like the sky is falling, yeah. you know. That's yeah, in his, the political that's world, right? Stick. In well, the political yeah. world, he represents that to me, that as far as, Here, what, as here's what the I character, think. you know. Here's what I think. I think for a long time now, for decades, the old media was being manipulated very strongly by special interests. It, that could include the government. It couldn't just include powerful lobby groups or politicians or political parties, right? And I don't think anybody will, will disagree with me. I mean- it's crazy when I put on CNN and Fox and they'll cover the same thing totally yeah. different. Yeah. Completely Polar different. Polar opposite stances. Yeah. One side is telling a different story yeah. Yeah. and the other side is telling the opposite story and they're both being very convincing. And to me, it's very obvious one is owned by one group and one yeah. is owned by the other group. Yeah. You know, or I can go even further and say what they're trying to do is just make us believe there's only two sides and those are the only ty- two or sides we can pick. creating conflict to create yeah. conflict. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I swear to God. So dude, old, such... in my old media has well, been- Well, half of it, that's what, half of this is like we talked about the other day is that these are just a bunch of billionaires behind scenes trying to nudge each other. You know, I, I was reading uh, Richard Branson's newest, mm-hmm. or newest book and he tells a story of his first encounter with uh, Donald Trump in there. And it's actually really crazy. Like, and he talks about like he their first encounter was they were meeting for lunch. This was in two thousand four, and it, at the lunch, Donald Trump is listing off like he just filed for bankruptcy at this time, somewhere around that time, right? And he's he's telling Richard Branson how pissed he is at these. He made he asked ten people for help when he was in this situation, and five of them turned their back on him. And he was like venting to him that it was his life's mission. To fuck the five <laughs> to of them. get them back, yeah, to get them back and fuck them. Oh wow! And you, you know, and then you know, ten years later, this guy decides to announce that he's going to be running for presidency. Of course. And so he talks about, and then he talks about how uh, Trump tried to mend that relationship by sending him letters, and he reads the letters in the uh, in the book and everything like that. It's really, it's really good, but it's crazy to think like, you know. Half the shit that we see, we sit here and we we debate over like the policies and oh, is it fair? Is it not right? When none of that was even taken into consideration, the real move was that oh, by me oh. making this piece move right here, I fucked that guy that I've been right. trying to get. Oh. I've been trying to and get. He's for- attached to to Trump on some level, right? right? Alex Jones, and so you know, I could see right. just just that that war between like the press. He already like made that clear. It's like we're going to war, you know, with. Like like fake news and all this kind of stuff. So I I, I could see it being as petty as that. Right, no, as the no. catalyst. Yeah, no. Old media is, old media was owned by special interests a long time ago, and you gotta you gotta imagine this. If you're the people controlling old media, or you have your hands in it, whether it's the government or special interests, and then you had to see this creation called the internet that is now able to deliver information radically different, radically democratized, much much less expensive. The barriers to enter are much much lower. And now you're seeing people flock. They're leaving old media. You're panicking. You're shitting your pants because yeah. you used to own the loudspeaker that pushed the narrative, and now you don't, and you see the internet. And so for a long time, the government's been trying to rein it in. They've been try- You know how many times they've tried to pass bills that will regulate and control the internet? Mm. And it's through all kinds of different ways, that, you know, ways that they're saying, oh, it's for safety or it's for this. Oh, it's for- to maintain freedom on the internet or whatever. The reality is they're just trying to get control over it. And now I think what's happening now is you're seeing these big social media giants have this power. And I think that they're they're getting influenced by some of the stuff. Yeah. So but but good per- luck. Perfect time to go to VR and yeah. start all over again. Yeah, but good <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, the way I look at it is good luck because you you know, I've I've said this before, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Like right. Alex Jones, five point six million new subscribers. In the 48 hours. That's what I mean. You, that's what we, it's cool that we could sit here and be like, scary time in life, but this is why I think we, we make it through this time. It's, it's because, a double-edged sword, yeah. Because the, you can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they could stop it, it would be scarier. If they could silence everybody, and I know there's a lot of alarmists that are out there that are like, the you know, sky is falling right now, like, oh my God, what's going to happen? But it's like, 
well, this is what's great is because nobody that is nobody that is anybody that has like a, like someone like Alex Jones who's got this much attention already. They weren't fucking with him when nobody knew who he was. They start fucking with you when you actually have pool. Right. And once you've got that pool and that and people are looking to you to listen to you for whatever reason, you can almost do no wrong at that point. Right. You know? at, at this point, this this person they have a lot of control and power, and you can't take that from them. We live in a good time where yeah. where, where you can get your information out there via another platform out there you can just use somebody else and, or create a platform for yourself i mean we live in that time where you could actually create your own platform that you fully control it's just i just don't see it ever being able to you know get silenced completely yeah no I they'll think, try all they want but it'll yeah. look, look at backfire well, it's yeah. just interesting to see how much censorship is starting to kind of come to the forefront like how do we manage you know what people talk about and what what do they tweet and what do they post and mm -hmm. You know, there, there just seems to be a lot of effort in that direction well, of like limiting it, people. I have some understand. I, you know, I understand that. Like we're we're seeing things too that, like for example, and I think pornography is an easy example. Like this, that's a major challenge that we just didn't have. We didn't think we didn't have fifty years ago. You know, right. yeah. or or less. Like it's just, and it's like, oh shit, this is like really hurting us as a as a country mm -hmm. something that we would have never even seen the, mm -hmm. the the possibilities of this you know what i'm saying no yeah. i get it you know here's the thing the, the reason there's a reason why free speech is the first it's the first amendment right mm -hmm. there's a reason it's the most important thing ever is to be able to speak out and if you ever read about the accounts of tyrannical regimes or when shit really went bad it starts by first manipulating speech and then by controlling speech, and then they control the narrative. It's always how it starts, um, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a very important thing. And here's the thing with with new media, and this is why I love it so much. First off, you can compare directly compare the internet and new media. What I mean by new media is like you know YouTube, social media, your ability to you know get your basically get your word out. You can compare that directly to the printing press, and when the printing press was invented at that time, no. Most people didn't have access to books. They were too expensive. It cost lots of money to buy a book because people had to write them by hand. And so as a result, most people didn't read. And when they wanted information, they got it from the nobles who learned how to read and could afford it or from the church who had a lot of power and could disseminate the information. Boom, printing press gets invented. Now books are cheap. Now everybody has access to information. One of the first best-selling books of all time was Marco Polo's travels. And he talks about how he travels the world and whatever. And that just blew people's fucking minds. And many people believe, rightly, and I agree, that the printing press is what ushered in the Renaissance and the Enlightenment where people started the scientific method. And now we're sharing ideas. But that didn't go down. Yeah. It didn't go smoothly. Here's the other thing. Mm. When people lose power, mm -hmm. they don't go down very easily. You had people burning books, mm. people getting executed. You had people like, you know. Well, who, who gave that analogy of this time is like the burning books? I, I thought that was really great. Well, I, I brought, I talked about it with Bishop Barron. He said that he agreed. He thinks that's a, it's exactly the same it's almost, analogy. Isn't that like the move of like a tyrannical regime that comes in? They want to like eliminate all of the past knowledge and all of the, you know, books and, and history Dude, and they want to rewrite it all. You control speech and you control information you control people that's a hundred percent and so that didn't go down very easily it's not like oh printing press boom everybody's got information you better believe the church fought hard nobles fought hard there was a violence people were thrown in jail uh you know there was a lot of censorship tried to happen but it was almost impossible to control because you know these books spread and it was a new technology and at the time they couldn't regulate it very well so the internet is doing the same thing and i I am 100% believe that they can try controlling it all they want and try censoring it. Good luck. It ain't going to, they're not, but I don't think they're going to go down without a fight. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm worried about. And so you're getting this war that's going on. Yeah, for sure. Which is, which is a little bit alarming for sure. It you know, smells it's like it's escalating a bit, you know, as of late. It is, you know, we're getting told what we can and can't say. Uh, colleges are, you know, telling, st I mean, it's very strange to me. It's a very strange, interesting time. And it's a little bit frightening to see something that Americans forever had valued so much now is getting questioned. I'm now mm -hmm. seeing, hearing people actually say, you know, speech sh should only be free so long as it's not hate speech. Well, I, yeah, I hate that. That's a made up thing right now. Yeah, uh, hey, you know, here, who determines what is hate speech? Yeah. That's right. purely to the person that, that defines it as, as hate speech. That's why when it comes to freedom... You, there is no a little bit less freedom. No, it's either you're free or you're not. You, you, the only limiting factor should be the other, the liberty of other people. As long as you don't infringe on that, 
You should be totally free. Which people would try and argue that you're infringing on those people's feelings. That's their argument right there, right? You're, that's your choice. You're, you're cho- you choose to feel whatever the fuck you want. You can shut me off because or it's not tune in. Right? Mm-hmm. That's right. So always protect speech. And here's the thing, by the way, <laughs> this is a unpopular thing to say, but it's 100 percent true. The freedom of the the, the First Amendment, the, the freedom of speech part of it, was not put in there to protect popular speech. Popular speech needs no protection ever. It was put in there specifically to protect unpopular speech, specifically because the founders understood uh, what tyranny was like, mm-hmm. and they knew that maybe at one point there would be tyrannical regimes again, and it was there to protect that sole voice that's going to speak out and say, right. I mean, you, you know, in, in, in communist Russia, you know what happened if you like protested against the government? You were thrown in the gulags or you were killed. Or even if you just said, I, you know, oh, I don't know, let's question this this ca- communism thing, you know? So it's a, it's kind of an interesting time. But new media is exciting because it's so decentralized. Like, right. how are you going to control it? That's, what's, that's what I mean. It's like, even as scary as it is and how weird of a time it is, like, it's, I think that it's, it is so decentralized that it will never allow it to get full. No one will be able to get full control. No, no. There's and too it, many rogue people that are yeah. looking out to make sure that doesn't happen that I think. And I mean, even, even what I saw with, uh, Bitcoin. This is how I see Bitcoin. Is like I think that's a way of like protecting ourselves. Like you mm-hmm. know whether you believe in it or not, or where it's going to go as far sort as of hedging our bets. Yeah, it's like you know at one point we absolutely could. So there's a very good chance that it will go that way. And I think it's, I think it's smart that we have people that are thinking like that already. And I've, I well, feel I feel better and safer now than I did. Well, here's the other ago. part of it. Like a lot of businesses now are building their, um, they're building their companies on these platforms. So like I personally know people oh, yeah. who had pages that were reaching 300,000 impressions a day and overnight, yeah, like just on Facebook, overnight they went from 3,000, 300,000 to 1,000 impressions. <clears throat> what the fuck just happened? Right. That's a lot of power that they have over you. I know guys who are making thousands of dollars a day through their, you know, their Facebook or social media advertising, then Facebook changes something and they went from thousands to hundreds right. overnight. So if you're a business today, here's my advice. Use all these very powerful platforms, but fucking hedge your bets, man, and build something that you own because... Well, we talked about this at the very beginning of building this. We, I mean, that was something that we had foreseen. You know, we didn't foresee necessarily like what platforms would start kicking people off or whatever, but it's like, I would never want to leave my our business in the control of some other businesses hands like yep. the, the and rely 100 percent on it like absolutely there's always going to be a risk right we have multiple revenue streams and if all of a sudden youtube shut down tomorrow yes it would affect the business if all of a sudden itunes start down tomorrow it would affect the business. absolutely but there, there's so many different ones that we've protected ourselves it's like okay which it, you know that's Something that I think a lot of people that are, you know, quote unquote, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, right now don't take into consideration. It's so easy to become an entrepreneur. And we talk about the, the cool benefits of that, that everybody thinks they can go run out and do it. And then you have these people that are trying to do it through social, a social media platform. And that's all they put all their eggs in that basket yeah. of like trying to build this image on a social media platform so I can then turn around and convert what 4% of them into X amount of dollars. It's like, that isn't a really sustainable business well, model. If that's all. You, that's always all the thought of. flaw. I've always I've always seen in being like very niche. You know, whereas that's that's something that's highlighted a lot with these business coaches and masterminds and things like that, is to really find your niche. You know, drive, be, own it, be the best at it. All, which will get you a lot of attention, get you like you know some revenue and consistent. But like, there's there's also that fact right there, like. What happens if like the market just completely shifts, you know, and like your niche is that one thing now that doesn't uh, well, it's, exist. It's like a, we know a lot of people that make good money off of building a network of people and then selling T-shirts and they're not fashion designers, you know, any more than I am. And they what they've done is the same thing that we do for Mind Pump, which is you buy some shirts at you know, wholesale, 
you put your logo and branding on it and make it creative and cool, pay a designer, make it neat, and then you re you resell it and it's a fifty percent markup. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you have shipping and in person to have to handle all that. It's not and then you gotta think about it like a lot of the people that buy those things, they buy it at a support. So that's how we look at it, like advertising, yeah. right? So it's most people that buy the shirts, they do it at, at a support thing. It's not a real business model. That's terrible because I know that I'm not a fashion designer and I know eventually those people that are rocking that out of support in three to five years when they get have kids and they forget about Mind Pump or they're busy, mm -hmm. they're not going to come back and buy the shirt because the shirt well, is... Plus, what do you do if, let's say you do build a massive Instagram page with lots of interaction and engagement and you build your, your, your audience off that and your business off. Let's say you get half a million good followers on Instagram and you build your business based off of Instagram and that's how you... You you Instagram and that's how you, like uh, you, you yeah no not, not Instagram yeah. Instagram <laughs> yeah. and that's how you talk to people that's how you communicate with people that's how you reach people that's Shoot how you advertise the and then what happens if Instagram says we're gonna ban you or we're gonna change an algorithm now you're not gonna reach nearly or, uh, many or your account just gets flat deleted I remember that was a popular oh, thing yeah. yes. when Instagram was first coming up you had a lot of people that had their their shadow pages. To protect themselves because big name people were losing like somebody <laughs> flags them for just some hater out there like right. there's all kinds of weird yeah, stuff. Yeah. So what what happens then? You go from being a fucking baller to zero instantly. Yeah. Instantly, and it's happened to a lot of people. So my advice is like use as many platforms as you can. Yeah. And then figure out a way to own your content and own your audience. Well, and I and really really and by own the audience, the way I look at it is like. Instead of trying to think of how I can add a thousand more people, I think about how I can impact ten more people's lives. Because if you can t if you can impact ten more people's lives, it's far more valuable than getting a thousand people's attention when in the social media world. Sure, Hands and down. they'll follow you, right? Yeah. So if you have to switch platforms, and they'll or, end exactly, yeah. and they'll end up being your best form of advertisement because you actually fundamentally help them and change their lives. So if you put the energy in, and time into that, that's going to pay you long term dividends. Getting attention by a thousand or two thousand or five thousand people because you have a cool car or because you look good in you know with your booty shots or whatever, that right there is not that valuable. Maybe in the short term because it gets the attention, which then potentially can convert at two to four percent. But then, like, it's not long term. The people that will follow you from platform to platform, it's just like being a great trainer. Like when you were a really really good trainer, you could drive, you can move across town. And clients, will, clients drive, will follow. Yeah, they'll drive they'll a half hour, an hour. Regardless. They'll pay extra money. They'll do whatever because you've built that much value. This business is no different. It's just now in this virtual world. So you got to learn to adapt. And I don't think that people are spending the time trying to figure out how do I add value to people's lives because that is really what will grow yeah. the business and sustain it over long term because the people will come back yeah, and they'll yeah. tell other people about. And that's it. I mean, think about it. I mean, put yourself in the in the shoes of Alex Jones. You've built this this empire of followers across several platforms. That's your business. And in the same day, imagine you get that phone in the same day. Oh shit, I got kicked off of YouTube. Yeah. Oh shit, Facebook just kicked me off. Oh my God, Apple, Apple just gone. canceled all of my podcasts. Okay, now let's You've got to be sitting that. there going, and he's already a conspiracy theorist. To let's talk about that. Advice. Is this the first podcast that's been regulated like that? Uh, I don't know if that's a, that's a good question. I think probably one that size. Yeah. Because he had a lot of episodes on there, a lot of hours. That'd be, of, that's an interesting Google Doug. First podcast ever regulated or first I podcast. Just, I haven't heard off. of any uh, podcast getting regulated. I mean, I've listened to podcasts and I'm like, wow, I can't believe you're getting away with this shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's what kind of cool platform this is. And Dude, so that worries me a little bit. I mean, uh, who owns fa Facebook is Zuckerberg. Apple is what? Tim Cook, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, YouTube. Who's the who's the head of YouTube? It's Google. Yeah, I don't, is that Google? Yeah, it's okay. the Department of Google. Okay, I don't know who those that guys, is. those guys compete with each other, don't they? Yeah, aren't they competitive yeah. a lot in a lot of areas? Yeah. How the fuck did they all decide to kick one guy off at the same time? Yeah. Don't you think if you're, don't you think one of the like if if one <laughs> of my like competitors. If one of my competitors kicked off a guy with it tons of followers, it could have looked like this too. It could have been one company leading the way and then putting the pressures on the others to follow suit because, by highlighting the negative things that he said, which is I'm sure was what they did. They probably took, 
You know, he talked about yeah, the, but it's the, been happening talked, forever. He talked about yeah. all that stuff it's in the, the shoot. Sandy Cook, yeah, uh, Sandy Hook stuff that was really inflammatory. Right. So they took that information. They probably took a stand against him and said, "This is what we're going to do. This out. This is un unright or unfair, and it's uh, we don't stand for it on our platform. We think you should follow suit." Mm. And they could have easily done that too. It's within hours. And Twitter might have yeah. yeah well, it, it could have went out. It's email, bro. Instantly. I mean, yeah, that but, been a, but but to make a big decision like that where you're cutting I'm, someone off who's got a hundred million or 50 well maybe it was followers. that maybe it was that quick of a decision where someone just had to make should we follow suit facebook is doing it you know whoever did it first right mm. so and so did it first they got some of almost here's how the power. here's how i would look at it if i'm facebook and i'm looking at the other platform that canceled them i'm like oh cool we're gonna get a shit ton more people <laughs> over here because yeah. now they can't watch yeah. yes it's just weird to me they're all competitors oh. it's very fucking weird either a they all got together and talked about this and coordinated it or b they all got told to do this. That's weird to me. It's very, very strange. It's a little bit, you know, it's mm-hmm. a little bit frightening. But again, I mean, I mean, good luck, you know. I mean, who is it that was saying this? Jordan Peterson. I was listening to him on Joe Rogan, and he was saying how the spoken word is now has as much power as the the written word. Because in the in the past, the spoken word had a lot of power, but didn't have as much power as the written word because you had limited bandwidth. So, like when you're watching TV mm-hmm. and you're watching the news. You know, or that you know you're getting interviewed on TV. You you have to condense you know discussions and complex th- you know statements or whatever into like eight Sound minute bites. segments. Mm-hmm. But but what you could do in writing is I could write a whole book. Right. I could write a whole. And you could reference like, it yeah. and go novel. back and look yeah, back. And, yeah. and the problem that now that was good, but the negative part of that is not everybody reads books. Not everybody. Everybody likes to hear. Right. We like that's how we communicate before we yeah. ever. Well, it's very interesting on that note because like now we have platforms like Netflix. Like f- same thing for novels. Like a lot of times you'll get like these epic novels, but. You know, you can't fit that all in one movie mm-hmm. or like a couple movies. But even. you can in like you can in a really episodes. long series. Exactly. You know, so it's it's really cool that now we have long form uh, content. Yeah, because that, that's, that's what he was saying. He yeah. was saying like that how the spoken word now has the power of written word to where you have you know Joe Rogan is the most. I mean, he gets I don't know how many da- millions of downloads Bro, he's, a day. He's, more he's, than he, Fox yeah, network and TV. CNC, CNN combined. He's got yeah, more yeah. more of an audience. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah so. So someone like Joe Rogan, who's who's his episodes routinely go over two hours, right? He's got episodes right. of three, four hours. Typically three hours, yeah. Yeah. That's a long – like old media, never. They would have said that would have killed you. And it's because you had limited bandwidth, but you don't with the internet. Right. So now we can go in depth and we can go deep and we can talk about all these complex issues. So now it's – you know, before a politician could say to you – I'm against poverty and I'm for prosperity. Everybody's like, yeah, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. Right. Let's now, get into it. Yeah, right. And, ma- and imagine too, in the future, it's like you're going to be able to play their voice back for when they said some shit during a campaign that they now yeah, contra- what did contradict you mean themselves by like five years mm-hmm. later yeah, or 10 years yeah, later. Yeah. But exactly, Justin, it's like, okay, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Let's get into some depth. You couldn't do it before. You couldn't have the bandwidth. But now pff, everything, it's so it's, it's really crazy. This is an interesting time. It's like this little war that's going on. I'm happy to be a part of it because I feel like we're we're the counter in the fitness industry, right? Oh, man, that's what yeah. it's yeah. what makes coming to work every day fun, man. Yeah, and we yeah. knew that taking on the industry, we yeah. knew getting into what we were getting into, and we knew it'd be a long battle. And it's like by no means are we winning, you know. Yeah. But that's what makes it interesting is that like we're getting traction with it, and we're not even close to winning winning the battle in the fitness space alone, dude. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. there's so much misinformation still out there but i absolutely feel like the tone has changed in the last three it already years. has to in oh, fitness it yeah. Has, yeah it Big used time. to it's, be i mean look at we i mean we have guys coming on the show like stan efforting that we have coming up and, and like flex lewis and you listen or, or i mean uh wheeler. flex wheeler and you hear um the way they're communicating they're talking about nutrition and training so different so uh, different than just 10 15 years ago yeah, so you know? different yeah so yeah. it's it's interesting i i know you know, ten years ago, it would have been sacrilege to post in a bodybuilding magazine or or even on a website. You know, before and after pictures. This is what they actually do. This is the bull. Nobody would have done that because it would have called everybody out. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's like it's kind of everybody knows. Like, oh, that's bullshit. You know, yeah. we could talk about all the scams. We could talk about the bad information. We could talk about all this stuff. And it's funny because a lot of that was new. I remember when we first started the podcast and we called things out. People were like blown away. Like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. Today it's not that shocking. No, it's only it's three not. years later. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's an interesting time. But it is. It is again. It's kind of scary. I mean, we're 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 you know going against the grain in fitness. It's not that controversial. 
but let's say we were uh, uh, going against the grain of politics or you know culture or whatever. I mean, iTunes could shut us down. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, iTunes yeah. could be like, ah, mind pump, to you know, whatever. Right, and yeah. then we and don't then agree with this. You're yeah. done. But at, at, but at this point, that would you know that would backfire the same way it did for them with Alex Jones. Now all of a sudden, people would be like, what? What's this podcast that yeah. got <laughs> you know that got canceled from iTunes? They must be saying crazy like, shit. It's almost yeah. like I remember remember Two Live Crew. Yeah. yeah. Oh Back my god. Day. It's like I just I just knew that it was like super scandalous and shocking, and so I was like, oh, I want to hear that. Yeah. You know I, mean? like, I want to listen to a, it. It's a ver- it's speaking a strategy, of, dude. It is. And speaking of which, uh, I heard on the Rogan podcast that there was a bill going through in Congress that hasn't passed or anything, but they were going to make saying disparaging remarks or things against police officers, hate speech, and they'll make it illegal. Wow. Yeah. So what? if you yeah, so oh. if you're on social media, oh, great. and you're like you know fuck the police or whatever, they could. They could come down on you. The law could come down on you. Now, and nothing like that's passed. But the fact that's even a militant state at all. Yeah, the fact that that even exists is scary, man. (laughs) That's really scary. Yeah, like like you know what's it? Albums like uh, "Fuck the Police" by you know yeah uh, yeah NWA NWA or or what's his name Ice T and uh, yeah what he's a cop killer body count yeah Yeah, that would have been thrown you would have thrown their asses in jail yeah you can't think that's gonna pass though right like they just can't pass (sighs) bro you get enough people behind these days I don't know man. You get enough people behind anything, and it's kind of scr- it's, yeah. It, look, when I see when I see college campuses having days, literally, I can't remember. Maybe Doug can look this up. There was a college that literally had a day where white people, white students, and white teachers couldn't come to school. What? Yes. What? Yes. And a professor <laughs> came to school because he's like, "Fuck that, I'm coming," and he got like he was getting basically well, what harassed if you don't by students. Identify as white. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Good point. That's that's I, a real thing. That's a real thing that actually wow. happened. I can't remember the. Doug, you got to prove that. That's like they can't be. That's that's <laughs> that's just so wrong. It's fucking that's, crazy to me. Yeah, really? The, that's horrific. I am. I'm gonna find it. Could right you now. could you imagine if we did that with any other race? Yeah. Yeah. That's any, what I'm saying. Pandem- pandemonium. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, oh, is that it right there? This doesn't make any sense. Yep. College melts down over plan for white people free day on campus. Which college is that? Wow. Yeah. Holy what? shit, State. bro! Every Evergreen State. Oh, Evergreen State, yeah, yeah. Evergreen wow, State that's, College. That's not racist at all. Where's yeah. this at? Where's that? That's uh, in Washington. Oh, it's in Washington. It's Washington. Yeah. Yep, yep. How you like that? Wow. wow. It's cool. it's kind of weird, and 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 if you stand up and you you're debating particular no ideas and stuff, you're getting si- people yeah, are getting silent. All you're doing is shutting down like a huge group of people. Like, no, nah, we're not listening anymore. Now it's going backwards. Yeah, is one of those. Like, that's why it's a little bit We're not bit working together game. anymore. Like you know, the, come on. You know what I really like? Uh, what was that rap song you showed us? Oh, yeah. No, that was really good. I should share. Well, I shared a, I shared a quote from it, uh, the, the quote that he-, he On your Insta story, I saw Yeah, that. yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll share on the- Well, I just oh, I shared- a powerful our, video. Our private forum is- I, Actually, I think everyone's having dialogue around it right now. It's basically, it's, it's, a, it's a white dude and a black dude sitting across from a t- table, and they're it starts off with a white dude- Rapping and saying like a bunch of but you terrible find shit. out it's actually the the rapper that's it's his voice yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know hey but he's saying it's terrible jo- Joiner Lucas okay J O Y N E R Lucas and it's in the song's titled I'm not racist and and the black dude does it back to the white dude but then at so the end good. at the really end they kind of come together yeah but it's very charged very it's charged very heated very you know, powerful like arguments back and forth and yeah at the end it's like this hug it out yeah thing, which is. Yeah, I like Powerful. that. No, yeah. I like this way better than the one that we shared that um, Gambino did. Yeah. Like yeah. the Gambino one was cool, artsy. I thought that was neat, but I, I told you that I, eh, there's certain things about it that I didn't like. Sure. This one, like, fucking love that, dude. Yeah. I did a great job yeah. of playing both sides of that, and it was written really, really well. You know, years- And it ag- takes you through kind of, if you the first time you watch it and you don't know- yeah, where it's going it takes you kind of like, ooh, takes you through a little bit of an emotional yeah, roller coaster. Like, ah, that's ah. that's to me that's really good art. You know, there you go. There's an example of you know we talk like you always give you guys shit about rap still today. There's still some powerful messages. That was very that good. was very well done. Right. That was very yeah, very I good. Think that's really good. You know, years ago, uh, and I, trust me, this is all connected. Years ago, uh, Coke and Pepsi actually had representatives meet and decide to start uh, the Cola Wars. This was in the 1980s. Yeah, you guys this was the, this? the Pepsi yeah. Challenge. Remember, you remember this in the 80s? I, yeah. I reference this all the time and people never get it. Yeah, yeah. So like when it, someone like, calls me out on something, I'm like, I'll take the Pepsi Challenge yeah, on that yeah. shit. So, so like, yeah. huh? So Pepsi, in, I don't get it. In the 80s, you had Coke <laughs> running commercials saying that their Cola was better than Pepsi. You had Pepsi saying that their Cola was better than Coke. And they would just talk shit back and forth and they'd have... They, you know, Pepsi did the Pepsi challenge where they'd have people drink, 
you know, two versions without labels on them, and then which one do you like better? And people say Pepsi, and then Coke did it, yeah. and they Not were hand selected at all. But what yeah. they don't, what people didn't realize when this was all going on, was that Pepsi and Coke were working together at doing this, and it was brilliant because what it did. Highlighted both of them. It isolated yeah. everybody else. It, took, it made us all believe that there is no yeah. other drinks on the face of the earth except for Pepsi or no Coke. That's it. Milk, it, water. It was you know, brilliant. It was well, absolutely. It's, 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 it's the same it, thing we do in politics. It's it took shares. Exactly. It's the same thing we took, do in politics. It took shares from 7-Up and Shasta and all these all other drinks. Stuff. And everybody thought they only had two choices, and I have to choose Pepsi or Coke. And that's I. That's that's and the that's consensus. And then you, the you Democrats you, you, and Republicans to the yeah. point where you started to have people become uh, very dogmatic about it. I yeah. mean, we're like, I'm a Pepsi guy. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm yeah. like yeah. where people like like totally identified. I'm a Coke with, guy. Right. We were here first. Right, right. in yeah. the 80s. I'm do, not. You, do you guys didn't notice that when you next time you go to the restaurant? Yep. And order, say, I want a Pepsi or I want a Coke, one or the other, right? And if they don't have it, they'll add, they'll say, Are you okay with yeah? Coke? Yeah. Like, and, and really? What's, what's <laughs> funny? Like, right. no, uh, I am not okay. I know with, it's a little bit of a formula yeah. by like you know like Absolutely a not. fraction. In the eighties, that was a big deal. People get pissed off. Yeah. Oh, you don't have Coke. You just have Pepsi. That's gross. Whatever. Yeah. It was a big deal, and it was because people were manipulated through advertising. So brilliant to pick one or the other. So brilliant. And this is the conspiracy theorist in me is like you know people. First of all, we have way more in common than we have different. People tend to get along way more than they don't. Otherwise, society would crumble. We all kind of want the same thing. Yeah. And I think what's what, what they try to do a lot of times to manipulate us is divide the fuck out of us. Yeah. Divide the hell out of us. And so you, you're guaranteed to pick one or the other because at the end of the day, whether you vote Republican or you vote re- uh, Democrat, the the same sponsors. They have the same specialists just hedging their bets. You know. You, you know, know what but, solves this? Communicating more often with each other and interacting more often with each other. And, right. and, and realizing, like, you guys are just trying to make us fucking hate each other. Yeah. You well, know? I, I I believe we're becoming more savvy to that too. I, don't I, you? I hope so. Don't you feel like that? I, I feel like I think that people are becoming more savvy and are smarter and they're looking at. I mean, that's the positive signs of like. You know, reading that book, iGen, like that was some of the positive signs of this generation coming up, and then kind of the devil's advocate I played with you guys the other day, which is, you know, I think they're they're more so. they're more well read. Mm-hmm. You know, they they can have access to information faster. That you know, when you were a 15 year old kid, like you know, if you wanted to figure out the statistics on marriage or something like that, where are you going to find that? Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. not in any of your high school school books. Mm-hmm. And like, where would you start doing that? Where a kid can Google that, search that right away, and go like, oh shit, you mean to tell me there's a 50 50 shot I'm going to get divorced? I know. Maybe maybe I should hang out yeah. a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just it's there's some positive sides too. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's interesting. But new media, I I knew it when way back when when Facebook started getting big, and I would comment on there and debate people and stuff. I remember saying this a lot to people like, "This is going to stir some shit up," mm-hmm. because this we have never been in a time like this where right. this can actually happen in this way. This is gonna it's gonna take power well, we're away. Kind of hitting a climax of it to to figure this out. Like we need to like really figure this out. Yeah. So I don't know. It's exciting for me because obviously I'm in the space and I see the new media and I see what it's doing. It's also a little scary because I can see it feels like, you know, the the old powers that be are a little frightened and they're trying to do their own thing. But we'll see what happens. My advice is is this like don't give money to anybody you disagree with. That's how you vote. Yep. That gives people power. And inform yourself, educate yourself, and always keep an open mind. Like try to be open minded. Try not to have preconceived notions. Remove your filter because your filter will change how you view things. And look at objective facts and and then take it from there. And then realize that most people are relatively good. And most people, we all want the same thing. We want what's best for our children. We want what's best for us. And we want people to have good lives. Most people are like that. And so once you realize that and you look at things through that lens, I think. It makes things a lot easier. I agree. Also, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, it's a nice transition. <laughs> We've got all kinds yeah, yeah. of free guides. I we were going to hug, though. Go check them out. Mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee 
And you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.